Okay, so just driving around Auckland this morning. I've had, believe it or not, I've had um, some requests for more tricky tools. So <laughs> I haven't done, I've only done the one of these obviously, and um, I had planned to do a bunch more, but it's just been, it's been a hectic start to the year. Yeah, just pulled straight out in front of me, it's wet this morning. People have lost their minds as they do every, every time it rains. Um, roads are greasy, so just cruising. I'm gonna go drop my trailer so we get some tires done. We'll see a week later this week. Um, and then go on my great low freight tonight. So just tooling around Auckland and um, just thinking about some things I could be talking about. And one of them is the standard of driving. <laughs> It's a very obvious one, and we're all aware of it. Um, those of us who drive for a living, especially um, motorists in this country, are shocking to see the amount of people that just clearly people are not taught to drive well in this country. I feel like it is relatively easy to get a license in this country. I mean, our government has admitted that they've done it that way. We have a low age for driver licensing and we I feel like we have very low standards for driver licensing because well uh, the, the reasons I've heard are that we have a lot of farmers in this country a lot of farms a lot of rural roads you know and um, youths need to be able to drive from a fairly young age you know I grew up around farms so I understand you know you've got to be able to jump in a ute and shed up the road or, or whatever um, and I get that but um, as the population grows in this country, the um, the standard of driving really needs to improve. I feel um, testing needs to be improved. Um, you know, um, we're probably aware that um, what Kotahi's been doing there. Um, they had their campaign for the last couple of years, the whole road to zero thing, and I've been on their social media commenting. Not that I've ever had a response, but I've been on their TikTok and I've been on their Instagram commenting that, you know, hey, if you guys are serious about this road to zero thing, why don't you listen to people in the transport sector, listen to people who know what they're talking about, you know, people like myself with 30 years um, driving trucks around this country, you know, like, we all know that two things that need to drastically improve for the road toll to have any effect um, and come down to any extent in this country is um, we need better roads and we need better drivers like the, the roading infrastructure in this country is appalling it needs to be improved drastically just so drastically for any meaningful change um, in the road toll to exist and the standard of driving in this country likewise the standard of driving in this country is appalling having spent a little bit of time driving in countries overseas over the years um, it's always quite shocking spent a month in the UK last Christmas and it's always quite shocking coming home and just the state of the driving in this country the state of the roads the state of the, um, the driving and it I think it comes down to two basic problems um, like let, let alone, never, just forget for a moment the fact that we're not taught things like defensive driver training is not compulsory in this country we don't need to learn how to drive in snow and ice we don't, you know, people aren't taught how to drive, how to control the skid, any of that basic stuff that we all should have to learn to drive in this country. But I think a lot of it comes down to attitude and what that breaks down to is two main things, is ignorance and arrogance. I think New Zealand drivers are incredibly ignorant and incredibly arrogant as a general, I mean, obviously that's generalizing, but I feel like a lot of motorists in this country consider themselves to be more important than everyone else um, you know driving in the UK people I noticed you draw we were driving on busy motorways very busy motorways uh, country back roads very small country tight lanes um, 
you know, some of them are only one vehicle wide really and I, I was, did a bit of running in the UK as well. So running on very skinny roads, motorists coming towards me would slow down or stop if they had to wait for oncoming traffic. They'd go around, no abuse, no horns, no fingers. Um, people just get it done. People just, you know, you drive up small country roads in the UK, a lot of cars parked on the side of the road. Quite often you've got to slow down oncoming traffic pull around everyone just does it it just it works people coming towards will flash their lights keep coming mate it's all good like the, the consideration for others on the road really blew me away whereas in New Zealand people will just drive straight towards you and you just you just got to stop because they won't let you through um, I just pulling out of a freight station um, many people will know tappers in Nielsen Street in um, Auckland um, Nielsen Street very busy street and I've been I've been going to Tappas since the 90s. I've been pulling out of that driveway for years and it's always been it's always been tricky pulling out of there. But in the old days you just you just have to wait for a truck. So sooner or later a truck's gonna come along, he'll flash his lights, he'll let you out. I was just literally just pulling out then. There was nothing coming from my right and the only vehicle coming from my left was a Tappas truck actually pulling in. And you would think he would see that the, I had a gap to my right he's turning across in front of me so it would have actually benefited him anyway because to let for him to flash his lights and let me pull out would have meant that it would have been easier for him to turn in because he's not having to turn around in front of me with his trailer on um, but it, the clearly didn't the thought never crossed his mind he just turned straight across in front of me um, which it was his he had right away he's turning in that's fine but you know like in the old day <laughs> I don't want to say the olden days and back in my day, I don't want to pull that out too much, but I remember when usually you just had to wait for it. As soon as you saw a truck come in, you think, oh cool, he'll let me out. Sure enough, he flashes like, where you go, mate? Because of course people used to talk on the CBs as well. Where you go, mate? Thanks, mate. Have a good one. No dramas. Um, uh, eventually, a, a truck, a guy in a TR tip truck actually ended up letting me out. Um, but I did have to wait a bit longer. And I'm actually surprisingly now finding more and more if I'm trying to pull out of a driveway or a side road, it's usually people in a car, which is sad to me. It's trucks. I'll have a dozen trucks will drive past. Not a, not a word, not a look, not a, no consideration, and they'll drive past. Um, and then eventually someone in a car will think, oh, there's Paul's going to this truck's going to pull out, and I'll flash their lights, and away we go. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And it's sad to me that truckies now aren't looking out for other truckies um, or uh, just other motorists in general like they used to. Another good example coming down um, to Rakao Drive yeah to Rakao Drive coming back into um, from East Tamaki this morning getting back into Penrose um, anyone will know if you turn on to to go across the Waipuna Bridge uh, traffic's very busy this, early in the morning Everyone's lined up, right lane's empty, people going, uh, Pakaranga, wherever, um, no one's going their way, everyone's heading towards the motorway to town, so the left lane's jammed solid, we're all crawling along, everyone's waiting, um, and you, as you get towards the end, you get those people that think they're better or more important than everyone else, just screaming up the right hand lane, at the last second they put their indicator on and jam across, which makes everybody else who's been waiting further back in the line, all the people who are in the correct lane, as they should be, just get told basically stuff off I'm more important than you are I'm just going to cut in and all these people who do that by the way you think you're clever you're not clever everybody knows to do that we just don't because we're not all assholes you know like <laughs> it's not a clever trick it's just it's basically a way of saying you're an arrogant douchebag you just you think you're better than everyone else and the worst thing was right at the last second a guy in a uh, should I name the company I probably shouldn't anyway a guy in an aggregate a bulk, bulk tip truck basically, um, truck and trailer, comes screaming up the right lane, just jams his brakes on, puts his indicator on and forces his way across. Like he starts moving across, basically traffic and people in the cars are just, obviously they're going to let him in because they don't want to get run over by a truck. So he's, that to me is just unacceptable behaviour from someone in the transport. Like this guy is a, this guy is a, a metro driver, he knows, he's obviously doing a job. Um, you know, he's going to pick up some metal or something from some people he's take. He was empty, I think. Um, but he is clearly a guy who knows the city. You know, this guy knows what lane he's supposed to be in. And it's just the arrogance of him to think, 
fuck all of these people, I'm more important than them. I'm just you know, like to do it in a truck and trailer, you know, like it's it's one thing to wait till the traffic starts moving and quickly push into a gap if you're driving a car, but to do it with a truck and trailer unit is just in my mind it's just pure arrogance. You know, like if you're um, if you're from out of town and you get you end up in the wrong lane as we all do from time to time, you know, that happens. But I you know, I know this company and I know this guy is a local driver and he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that he didn't want to wait, so he just gonna force his way across. And um, <laughs> it's just it's just a sad sad indictment on the transport industry. There's a lot of metro. I mean these guys drive around Auckland all day every way. I've all day every day. I've done that myself and it sucks. But that's why I don't do it. Um, I worked for a company doing containers for a while um, in the early 2000s uh, at night luckily which was when the traffic wasn't too bad. It wasn't really for me so I got back into line haul. I did it again a few years back. Um, worked for Super Freight. Fantastic company. Loved the, loved the company. Great truck. Great guys. Great, good money, like really good people to work with, but the job wasn't for me because I'm a line driver at the end of the day, that's what I like doing. So rather than become one of those bitter jaded guys that drives around town cutting people off all day every day, I just thought this isn't for me. I went back to my home. So um, traffic's just been calling all day today because it's been wet this morning. You just get there when you get there. I mean where do, what are we doing? Uh, just heading out to Highbrook at the moment. We're doing 45 in a 60k area. I don't know why, um, there's a car and a truck driving side by side and no one's in front of them, they're just obviously just taking it easy because of the wet, which is fine, but, um, but I guarantee at some point someone's going to do the old lane hop backwards and forwards before I get to where I'm going, and, you know, there's always someone out there, that, and, and the funny thing is, is this is another point I want to make, a lot of the people who are impatient drivers, especially on the motorway, are actually the cause for a lot of the traffic being as bad as it is on the motorway. Let me explain that. So if everyone just goes, right, I need to be in this lane further up, I'll stay here. You know, or well, the guy who's going all the way out of the city, I need to be, I'll just stay in the right lane, I'll just stay here. If everyone just did that, traffic would actually move a lot smoother. But what happens is people go, oh, this lane to the side of me is moving a little bit faster. So they work their way across, they cut everyone off, everyone has to break, everyone slows down, so that lane then becomes the slow lane. So then the lane he's just come out of starts moving and you know, as these people are doing this all the way up, these lanes, one lane will move to fill that gap, so people hop across and then the lane they just come out of will start moving to fill the gap from someone up further up who's done it, so then they'll hop back. And these people, are, I've, I've seen this before, I've actually been driving out of the city from right in town all the way up to South Auckland and I've watched these people do this, hop backwards and forwards across three lanes, cutting people off, people's having to jam on brakes, all sorts of carry on. And by the time we get, you know, south of the city, way out, way out the end of the motorway, I can still see these people. You know, they've cut eight or ten cars off in the meantime, and they're still like 20 metres in front of me. But what they've done is they've actually caused all of the traffic to continuously break as they keep changing lanes. Um, so. It's ironic, sadly ironic, that the people that do, the people that are the most impatient with the motorway traffic are usually the ones that are actually causing the traffic to be as bad as it is. Uh, and I, like I say, again, I noticed um, traveling overseas, I've traveled on um, on freeways in LA, in Vegas, I've, I've traveled in, in New York, I've traveled in um, London. London's pretty bad for traffic, Paris is terrible for traffic. but. In general, in the UK, driving around, say, Manchester up to Scotland on the, on the um, motorways over there, you don't see a lot of that lane hopping. Even when traffic's busy, people just say, right, I'm going to need to be in this lane eventually, so I'm just going to stay here. Um, and I don't know if that's because there are a lot of cameras over there in the UK. There's a lot of cameras on the motorways. Just the UK in general, Big Brother's always watching. And people get ticketed, and I feel like that's the problem. Um, in New Zealand, um, just coming back to what I said in one of my Snapchat rants a while back, is I feel like the New Zealand police are obsessed with speeding. A little bit drink driving used to be, not so much these days, but speeding, it's just the easiest thing to police. They set up cameras, now it's been handed over to NZTA or the old Waka Kotahi, um, and they're going to just triple the numbers of speed cameras because it's just a great way of revenue, revenue 
and they say that it's not. They say ideally they want to be issuing no speeding fines, but it's really hard to believe because again, anyone who spent a lot of time on the road will tell you speed is very rarely the only contributing factor to an accident, especially a fatal accident. Sure, speed um, often exacerbates the damage in a crash, but it's very rarely a speed the only cause of an accident. Usually it's because um, the driver's lost control, partially because of speed, but maybe because of surface. You know, you, uh, a lot of the bridges in this country are terribly matched with the road. There's usually big, a big hump as you come up onto the bridge, they're quite often on a corner. Traction is terrible on some of these some of these bridges. You know, you hit this bridge at speed and you, you know, all your, all your um, the inertia forces all the weight of your vehicle, which causes the traction on your tires to fly up, which takes the traction off your tires. Cars skid, people control, people drive. And this is, again, comes down to driver training. You know, like we go, we drive around town with a cop in the car, parallel park, three point turn, handbrake, well I used to do, in the old days with manual cars, used to do a hill start, handbrake start, um, probably not so much these days, but um, and that was it, and you're good to go. You know, you might never have driven on the motorway, you might never have driven on the desert road and snow and ice, but you get a license and you're away. Um, we're not taught how to drive with all this other stuff. And, and UK and Europe you are like oh I don't smoke stuff out in the UK but I know Europe particularly it's really hard to get your license in countries like France and Germany um, you have to do stringent testing and it's expensive but you know the drivers over there you know look at the they, they have a lot of winter conditions they have um, you know like a lot of snow ice storms um, all of that stuff you know not not like here where we, do, we get a, a light dusting of snow on the desert road and they close the road for the night. Over there, they just they just plow through it. If they put chains on or whatever, snow tires, all that sort of stuff. Same in America, actually. You know, a lot of states in America, you know, they get they just get it done. And so I feel like if we had better roads and better drivers, the road toll would come down. Never mind all those, the barriers and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't want to get into the barriers. But um, the, the conditions of the road in this country are terrible, and I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I, well, I know what the answer is. The, the money that we contribute, and petrol tax, uh, road user charges, all that sort of stuff that we pay, especially in the transport industry, we pay heavily for it. If that money was all used for roading, of course we'd have amazing roads. But it's not. We all know it's not. So I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> Successive governments, they all do the same thing. They promise us these amazing roads and they always get paid back. But the other thing is, is I don't know why it takes us so long to build roads in this country. Like they've been, they've been putting extra lanes on the motorway now for, I don't know, what feels like most of my life. Um, you know, they, they, they started extending the motorway from, where was it, Manukau, I think? From two lanes each way to three, all the way up to, they're almost out to Papakura now. Um, when did they start? I don't know. I would still have my truck at Main Freight. I'm thinking like 2000. When did I sell out? 2016. So 2013, I, I want to say, maybe around then. 2012, 2013, something like that. So what are we now, 10 years later? Just to put a couple of extra lanes on the motorway for not even the entire motorway, just like half of it. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is just a rant, by the way. I mean, I'm not saying I've got all the answers. I'm just, yeah, this, these are just my thoughts. So, but I'm going to disconnect my trailers now. And um, I'm going to go get some tires done. And then I'm going to go home and have some lunch. So, whatever you're doing, enjoy your day. Stay safe out there, everyone. Just, uh, just wanted to add an additional thing. So, um, one thing I've noticed, um, you can say what you like about Wellington drivers, but one thing I've noticed in Wellington is there are times when they, the Hutt motorway, so we drive up the Hutt motorway heading out of Wellington to head over Rimutaka to Masterton, um, often, frequently as you know, if you watch my videos, so um, we drive the Hutt motorway quite a lot. And there are lots of parts of the Hutt motorway where it's two lanes and then it comes down to one lane, spreads out to two lanes again, and then like one lane might be a turning lane to exit only. Um, but sometimes there's a couple of places where it's just basically like a passing lane ending so the, the, the lane moves just from two to one and um, I've I've noticed in the past so and there are parts of parts of the country where public holidays they will actually the police will cone off a passing lane because there's no point if traffic's crawling um, on like a holiday 
on a holiday period, weekend, where there's just traffic crawling, there's no point even a passing lane because people all just spread out and then they've got to merge back again and all it does is actually restricts the flow of traffic. Um, I've noticed a couple of times I've been on the Hutt motorway, um, usually we're leaving in the morning so we're going against the flow of traffic heading into the city because we're heading out, but I have in the, uh, over the years driven quite a bit um, in the afternoons heading up the Hutt motorway um, when the traffic's been really busy and those, some of these points where it goes to two lanes is very short, it's only for a short piece um, and people just won't pull out. It's not coned off, the lane's open and in Auckland you guarantee people are going to pull out and use that lane to try and overtake. Whereas I've noticed in Wellington often you'll get every now and then you'll get one guy, usually an arranger, if I'm honest, but um, it'll, it'll be, it's almost, yeah it's mind blowing how everyone just knows like hey look there's no point, we're all in a line of traffic, we're all sitting here, we're barely moving. There's no point pulling out to overtake everyone, we're all in the same line. People will just stay single file, that whole right lane will be empty. And I just, it blows me away because I'm so used to driving in Auckland where, like I say, that lane would just immediately fill up and then everyone's just trying to merge back together again. And, you know, you might not get past many people, but, and that, again, that comes down to, I don't, yeah, I don't know what it is about Wellington drivers, they just, maybe it's a hut thing, maybe it's just a upper hut people are just a little bit less uh, impatient, I don't know, but um, I have noticed it in, in parts of the country where people are a lot more considerate than others and um, yeah, Auckland, Auckland I used to like driving in Auckland, I've been driving trucks in Auckland since the 90s and I used to quite like driving in Auckland because people in Auckland were always used to traffic, so you know living living in Mount Maunganui Tauranga in the day, you know like it got really busy really quickly and people just weren't used to the, the traffic people would lose their minds when there was traffic and uh, just the standard of driving down there was appalling. Whereas driving a truck, I've always had to drive in a truck through Hamilton. People in Hamilton are very, very unusual. Aggressive drivers, just, I've had people drive up on footpaths to get around me in Hamilton, like just crazy. I've had people drive across roundabouts to get around me. Just unreal, crazy driving. But Auckland people were just used to it. People like, used to feel back in the day you drive around Auckland people just used to traffic. Oh someone's trying to pull out, let them go. We're all we're all stuck in traffic, you know, might as well let them out. Whereas now I feel like that has shifted somewhat in the last probably 10 years. Um, people are a, a lot more selfish now, um, which is a shame because like I say I always get there, there we go, find a gear. Uh, I always found people were quite considerate in Auckland to a point. Um, unfortunately that, that point has been reached and now um, it's just like everywhere else people are just impatient and very selfish and I think it, uh, another thing is, is I feel like it comes down to Kiwis are just always, I don't know, whether we're always just running late or whether we're always just in a hurry or I've noticed, yeah like I said I've noticed driving overseas people just seem to just drive and you get there when you get there you know like if you're I don't know, we got stuck in a traffic jam coming back from Vegas and there was a big crash and people were driving up the shoulder but a lot more people were being pretty considerate, you know, people were just like, oh this sucks, but hey, it is what it is, we'll just get there when we get there and everyone was just taking their time, we're all just getting there, crawling in traffic. Um, every now and then someone would shoot up the shoulder, every now and then a cop would chase them and catch them, but, but um, for the most part people were just... I guess resigned to their fate, I don't know if that's the correct term, but and I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I also feel like the culture of driving in Auckland has changed. Obviously, those of us who have been driving up here for a long time know that it used to be, you know, the left lane was if you were a slow vehicle or if you were getting off soon. Uh, the middle lane was for people who were just going, going a long way but not in a hurry, and the right lane was the fast lane. Everybody, the, it's never been Technically, the, the right lane has never been designated as fast lane. All lanes in the Auckland motorway have the same designation. But everybody knew that the right lane was for it's the zoom zoom lane. If you're not in a hurry, get down the right lane. Whereas now, that's all gone out the window. And obviously, you know, the, the population of Auckland has drastically increased and the infrastructure has not. Um, and now it's just the way it is. You know, like all three lanes of the motorway will often be crawling. Um, not even in peak traffic just in the middle of the day for no reason at all and that's just the way it is now we'll just we'll just get on with it 
and sometimes it's frustrating but um and then like you say then you get that guy that's not always a guy sorry you get that person that's zooming in and out of lanes cutting people off and i feel like again it comes down to ignorance and arrogance you know the guy the guy in the audi or the ranger that thinks he's more important than everyone else he's cutting in and out of lanes that's arrogance but also the person you know if the motorway's quiet and the person who's sitting in the fast lane doing 80 next to the person in the middle lane who's also doing 80 when they could actually just pull over and do the same speed in front or behind that vehicle you know there's a massive gap in front of them there's a line of really impatient frustrated people behind them and they're completely oblivious and that to me is, is complete ignorance like you should be aware of your surroundings like oh i'm uh, there was a case actually a while back on the coromandel road there was a guy driving some antique vehicle so this is a couple of christmases back some old antique thing and he had he made the news because he had something like 126 cars behind him um, and so it's like numerous people start triple five to him so you know they, they the police comms eventually the police came out pulled him over and said why didn't you pull over and let all these people pass and he's like oh i didn't even realize they were there that's not an excuse you know you can't you can't tell a cop oh i was doing 120 but i didn't realize because i didn't look at the speedo so you know you can't give me a ticket there's, ignorance is not an excuse for poor driving you know if you're driving slow on a, on a busy road and you have a ton of people behind you first of all your car must have a mirror i'm pretty sure even empty cars have rear view mirrors um, but also even if you don't have a mirror if you're tying a caravan and you don't have a mirror extender or whatever you know you're going to have people behind you pull over into a gravel pit or a rest area i mean I, I, us truckies do it all the time and you know to be fair in the old days people were tuned out and thank you not so much these days i can pull over at the top of a hill not even on a slow vehicle lane or a passing lane but just I'll just pull over onto a, a pullover area and stop if I've got somewhere like a busy road like a maybe cell phone or something I could let 10 15 cars past and I'll be lucky to get two toots now in the old days most people would toot away again I think people now are very insulated they're very you know they're probably thinking oh thank god I'm past that truck they don't think oh that guy in that truck you know he's got he's got a heavy load on you know he's doing his best he's going as fast as he can and now he's kind enough to pull over and let us pass they just people don't think like that anymore they just think you know about bloody time now i can go and um it's a shame because again if we all if people thought more about each other the road would be a lot more pleasant to drive on <laughs> also if they were made better they would be as well but uh but yeah you know like it doesn't it doesn't have to be as stressful as people make it and i feel like also those people that are constantly weaving in and out of lanes cutting people off those people are already stressed so it doesn't matter how fast you get there they're still going to be stressed because they cause themselves all that stress as well as putting that stress onto others by the way they drive so um yeah i don't know again i'm not exactly coming up with any answers these are just thoughts but um you know just maybe maybe turn the radio up Maybe just uh, just chill out. Just get there when you get there. You know, if you're five minutes late, maybe next time leave a bit earlier. Um, as truckies, we do have to learn a degree of patience because obviously we we can't always pass slower traffic when we want to, um, although some do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Just try and think more of others on the road and um, pay it forward. If someone lets you out on the side street, and that's another thing I do quite like about you. Quite often you'll. Um, you know, you'll see, you'll let someone out out of the side road or something like that, and then the next time you get to a side road, there'll be someone, and they'll, the person you've just let out, will do that for the next person. And I like that shit. Like, we need to do more of that. But um, yeah, just think of others. It's just it's consideration for others on the road is a big part of driving. Uh, we all have to share the roads. It's a shared space, and unfortunately you know like we forget that we tend to forget that you know everyone's in a hurry we think we think we're the um the star of our own you know we're the, we're the main character of our own life uh, but so is everyone else you know like everyone else on the road has as much right to be using it even even cyclists <laughs> i hate to say that because god they can be a pain in the ass sometimes and they are some of the most arrogant people on the roads given that they are also the most vulnerable i don't understand cyclists sometimes but um you know i just posted a, my video yesterday of um driving in the um mounts of fungamata and the truck and that is a very sketchy road to be driving a truck on because there's a lot of cars and boats 
a lot of cars and caravans, there's a lot of other big trucks, and there's also a lot of cyclists. It's a great road, I imagine it's probably a great road to cycle on, um, but it's you've just really got to be careful driving that road because, um, you know, in a truck as it is, we're barely able to stay on our lane anyway on that road, let alone having to go around cyclists. So, um, yeah, everyone just needs to be real wary about stuff like that. Just keep an eye out for each other. Just be aware, like, um, yeah, I'd, I, I've been saying for years, I've been a big um, big supporter of, I think defensive driver training in New Zealand should be compulsory. I think it should be subsidised by the government so everyone can afford it. Everyone should have to go to a school and learn to drive around the cones and learn how to control a skid, learn the physics. You know, um, I grew up around farms, I grew up around trucks, and I grew up around motorsports. So I learned to drive from, you know, people who actually were very good at it. So I was quite lucky I had good mentors, but not everyone has that advantage. And um, I feel a lot of people don't understand the concept of brake and accelerate out. You know, the basic physics um, of, of braking halfway around a corner, what it does to a vehicle and how dangerous it is. Um, I feel like a lot of that stuff is just not taught. It's not understood. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of the money that should be going towards that sort of stuff, as well as going towards better roads, is just not. It's going towards God knows what. But I mean, we don't want taxes to go up, but I'd like to see the taxes that we pay towards roading actually go towards roading, and maybe maybe the money they collect from um, from speeding fines, um, from policing, road policing, should go towards subsidising. Um, of driver training so that everyone can afford it. Just some thoughts, tell me what you think.